Entre ladies and gentlemen, dear Ola, dear Oliver, today marks a momentous occasion, the official opening of accession negotiations between Ukraine and the European Union. On behalf of the Belgian Presidency, I extended my heartfelt congratulations to the Ukrainian people and their leaders for reaching this significant milestone. This is a testament to the unwavering spirit of the Ukrainian people in the face of immense adversity. Your courage and steadfast commitment to the values of freedom and democracy are an inspiration, an inspiration to, uh, for us, um, to us all. The Belgian presidency has invested a great deal of time, I have to say, and energy in reaching an agreement among the 27 on the negotiating framework, which we presented today, and we are delighted, really delighted, to um, have reached this agreement a few days ago and to be holding this conference just a few days before the end of our presidency, and indeed in Luxembourg, which makes happy uh, Xavier Bettel as well, so mm -hmm. everybody is happy. Our relationship with uh, Ukraine has been uh, steadily growing for over a decade. You are a close partner already deeply integrated through the Eastern Partnership and our Association Agreement. And this agreement has facilitated extensive uh, cooperation in various sectors, laying a strong foundation for further uh, progress. With the years, you became more than a closer partner. You became a member of the European family. We also recognize that this process starts in terrible conditions. The European Union stands united in condemning Russia's unprovoked war against Ukraine. We remain unwavering in our support for your independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity and our commitment to providing financial, technical and military assistance will continue as long as necessary. Today's IGC marks the start of a long and demanding reform process aimed at integrating the EU acquis, communautaire and min meeting the Copenhagen criteria. The accession process that started today will be demanding requiring continued dedication to reforms in crucial areas like the rule of law, judicial reform, and the fight against corruption. We encourage the Ukrainian authorities to continue to demonstrate the strong political commitment to EU reforms that they have shown to date. In this respect, reforms concerning the fundamentals will remain at the heart of the process. The accession process is, of course, a win-win prospect. The perspective of an EU membership offers significant benefits for both sides. Ukraine will gain access to a vast market, fostering economic growth and investment, and EU citizens will benefit from closer cultural and social ties from new opportunities and new partners. I especially welcome Ukraine's commitment to the common foreign and security policy. This alignment reflects your strategic uh, choice as a European nation. We will continue to deepen our dialogue and cooperation with the Ukrainian civil society, ensuring public support for this historic journey. Dear Ola, we all remember the EU flags flying on Maidan Square 10 years ago. It was exactly in 2014. We remember what Ukraine has endured since that day. When we said Europe is Ukraine, Ukraine is Europe, those were not empty words. We meant it and your presence here today is the living proof of that mutual commitment. 
Together, we can build a stronger, more secure and prosperous Europe for all. Now, let's all get to work to make it happen. Let's be fair and honest. The road will be long and we will not always be an easy one. We know that we have a lot of work ahead on us. Member states will decide when Ukraine fulfills the conditions to move ahead based on objective progress, but with unwavering deter determination. We are confident Ukraine can make it. We will be supporting you on every step of the way, you are not alone. We are with you. Thank you very much, Ola. And now I think I, I give the floor to uh, Commissioner Oliver Varelli, please.